How do you know where the products you buy come from? When today the traditional label made in is outdated. Nowadays, many products are built out of a supply chain that crosses several national borders. Items like electronic or transportation equipment are the result of a network of factors in different countries involved in the production, delivery and sale to the final consumers. In this simple scheme, we see that many steps are required to transform raw materials into parts and components, then final goods, before they arrive in the customer's basket. Today, this process is truly global. However, the label made in refers only to the very final stage of the production. This can be very misleading. For example, let's take a mobile phone. It is designed in Finland and exported from China to the United States. Thanks to a study made by the Research Institute of the Finnish Economy, we can see how this telephone comes together on a global supply chain. This telephone is made of 600 individual components and other inputs such as software licenses. The hardware components account for 33% of the mobile retail price. The software design, mainly licenses and copyrights, represent 4% of the retail price. 47% of this price is due to research and administrative tasks. The actual assembly of the telephone accounts for only 2% of the total value. And other tasks, mainly distribution and retailing, represent 15% of the final price paid by the consumers. Now, let's observe where the value added comes from. Administrative tasks are done in Europe, mainly Finland and the UK. The hardware components are the result of tasks conducted in Europe, Asia and the United States. The software design comes from Finland, UK, USA, Germany and Japan. Final assembly and mass manufacturing are done in Finland and China. Other tasks are completed in Finland, the United States and Asia. If we look at how much value added each part of the world has brought to this process, we get this. Europe has 51% of the value added. This is because it is dominant in the branding, development, design and administration. 28% of the value added comes from North America, where the phone is sold. 16% comes from Asia. And 5% comes from the rest of the world. The conclusion is that it is very difficult to attribute a nationality to a telephone. Is it Finnish? Is it Chinese? We see that many countries participated in this process which created employment and income for many people from different nationalities across different regions. But today, the phone appears on trade statistics as being made in China, because China was the last step in this long global process. Made in the world is therefore better adapted to the present reality of global production. Measuring where the value added comes from is today very important. It will help governments and analysts understand better the relationship between trade and development. It will put also into a more realistic perspective bilateral trade imbalances between countries.